Hello viewers, uh, welcome back to part two of the SEM Teardown. Um, I just want to follow up a, little, a few little details on what was said in the previous video. Uh, as I mentioned, a lot of the stuff I'm, I want to give away for free for people who want to use it, and indeed um, a number of people have been in contact already, and um, there's quite a lot of it going to be disappearing off to a few different countries. Indeed, somebody with an identical machine um, who is looking to restore it to working condition is going to be having a few bits off it as well. So let's just run through some of the components on here and I'll give you a basic rundown on what is what. So looking at the column from top to bottom, uh, right at the top we are going to have the electron gun itself. The connections for the electron gun would have been under this cap. Um, excuse this, it's quite a long thread. Um, this is obviously a, just a, a protective cover. Um, in there a large connector would have gone in with all the high voltage uh, connections on um, and plugged into a few terminals down in the base there. You'll see more of that in detail when I take it to pieces. Now the, uh, the electron gun um, I believe is made up of a tungsten filament, a tungsten wire. Um, excuse me, sorry, I just need to interrupt myself here. When I originally filmed this section I didn't really understand what all the components were for as I removed them during the teardown. It has taken me quite a while to research and examine all the parts and while doing so I realised that I've made quite a few mistakes, uh, partly due to me not knowing that the gun assembly in this Hitachi 8800 is a field effect type. So I have all of the parts here, uh, I will go into detail about all of those once you have seen the rest of the disassembly. It's a bit of a treat because there's lots of really awesome looking stuff. Wow, look at that. Um, so I will see you in about 20 minutes, enjoy. And as we saw in the previous video, uh, this big port here is for the large ion pump which evacuates the electron gun section of this chamber. Um, you'll see these as well. Um, these were evident on the uh, ion pumps as well. These are heaters. Um, there is basically just a resistive, resistive heater which is uh, strapped to the side of the uh, tube. So. Uh, part of the procedure for uh, maintaining and setting up these is a baking procedure. You evacuate them down and then you bake them. Um, you get them really hot for several hours, uh, which boils off any of the uh, contaminants inside and uh, it allows you to achieve a much higher vacuum. So I believe this is essentially divided up into um, three sections. We have the electron gun section. This will be the first focusing coil lens in effect uh, then that is and separated by this here which is going to be a beam aperture control and this is similar to the one that was on the uh, right on the base of the uh, column attached to the sample chamber so I believe this uh, just inserts a small thing in and out of the beam to allow you to change the size of the beam um, so this is essentially just an aperture which is moved in front of the beam uh, this connection here I think is a beam monitoring, so um, as this is inserted into the beam it picks up um, the actual strength of the beam, the beam current, and I believe that's what that's for. And just down here we have a connection and a number of wires running into the actual column. These will be for the um, focusing uh, lens coil, which will probably be in this section somewhere I would imagine. Uh, there will also be connections there for the stigmatism control coils um, and lensing because unfortunately the beam that comes off the electron gun isn't perfect and you have to sort of squash it in various directions to get uh, the beam into the best quality um, beam as possible. So it'll be interesting to see what they're like. Uh, down in the base here we have, let's just turn this round. We have another section and I believe this is a basically a valve to completely close off the column from the sample chamber. And that seems to be um, achieved by this pneumatic piston uh, which inserts something in to the chamber in there. Can't quite see it from, from the outside so hopefully we'll be able to see more when we take it apart. There's a small micro switch there obviously just detects when it's actually in place. Yeah. 
So that is the um, heaters uh, for part of the bake out. Um, actually, just um, thinking about this, I think there might actually be also additional heaters inside the actual ele electron gun itself. Um, I have seen um, details of a user guide for a later model. It's actually um, electron microscope and they actually make contact with two pins inside there for doing the bake out uh, procedure as well. So um, these might not be the only ones on this. I don't know if you can actually read that there, but it says 100 volts and 100 watts times two. So each of those little plates is 100 watts each. Uh, so yeah, that's gonna get pretty hot. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna start by removing the top of this cover. Now, I believe uh, that these uh, were in intended to be uh, taken to pieces. The electron gun, as far as I know, um, has a life lifespan of about a thousand hours. So um, these would have been uh, replaced periodically. And that's obviously why somebody's written on the talking down sequence on here to remind them. Uh, so I'm just gonna slacken off the tension on these um, four set screws and then I'll start by undoing these and seeing if this comes off. Okay with all of those um, bolts off this entire assembly and the what I believe is the electron gun, it seems to want all come out as a complete unit. So I've just put on some gloves. Uh, I've got a piece of polystyrene here just to place it on. Um, the gloves, because um, somebody has uh, asked to have the electron gun because they want to use it in their own um, electron microscope, I just don't want to get greasy fingers all over it because um, that would uh, make it hard for them to clean it later for when they use it. Okay, there's the electron gun itself. Uh, right, you um, can see the actual tungsten wire uh, sh shaped into a V, V shape there. I'm not gonna go and um, touch this because I said uh, somebody wants to try and reuse this. Uh, we've got a couple of connections uh, which were on these spring plugs which connected into some terminals down on the base there. I wonder whether these are actually sacrificial. I think these little plug things, well, I think one has actually stayed in place in, in there, and that's why this is sort of stretched off. But the way these are designed, I suspect they're sacrificial, so once you take it out, you have to replace them. Um, uh, we've got a large insulator, because obviously this is running on high voltage. And just on the base of that, we have this um, sort of metal bellows. Um, that will pre to provide um, a vacuum tight seal um, but also allows it to gimbal around so you can change the direction that the, the filament is pointing in. Okay, just got that out of the way. Um, move this a bit closer. I've removed the studs out the top. Uh, we've got a copper gasket on the top here. And you can see inside there we've got this sort of like shield around and those two terminals or the what the terminal's plugged into. And right down at the bottom there's a small little hole Nice looking piece of uh, something there. I'm not quite sure what it is. It looks like it's chrome plated. Maybe, might be copper. Um, yeah, that's obviously some kind of shield. So another nicely made piece of kit. Uh, we've got a ceramic um, structure there. Let's just get rid of these screws. So the electrons have come streaming out of there, down into the next section. There's a better view down into the next section. Uh, we've got another one of those sort of shielding plates. It looks like I have just slackened that off by removing this part. There's another hole in the base there. So it's
Yes, we've got another beautiful piece of uh, something or other. Um, I'll try that. Uh, Um, yeah, magnet sticks to that, so I'd say that's steel, so it might, um, it's very bright, I would say that looks like chrome chrome plating to be honest, but uh, I guess it could be a few other different things. So we've got a small aperture in the bottom there, you should just be able to see it, it's definitely smaller than the first one. And looking deeper down inside the uh, the column there we have um, a beam control, so this is on the side, the adjustment thing on the side, um, and I believe um, each of those four holes has um, an even smaller aperture in, so that's uh, that would be size one, two, three, four, and then when it's in that position, it's it's moved completely out of the way, so um, there's no restriction on the beam size. Next, I'm going to remove the beam control doohickey so that should just unbolt from here and then probably just slide out I think. And now we've got the beam control out uh, so this has gone a little sort of vernier um, control, it's actually got four four notches on it, so zero, one, two, three, and four. And that just moves this in and out. Um, so we've got a, an electrode connected up there, as I said, I think that's for uh, monitor, monitoring the actual beam current. That comes out to a um, kind of similar to a BNC type connector, I'm not sh entirely sure. Oh, yeah, it looks like we've uh, We've got part of it, <laughs> so yeah. And then we have the the actual four apertures. I don't know whether you've noticed already, but all of the bolts holding this together um, are using studs and nuts. Um, uh, studs and nuts are much much better if you're. Um, wanting to torque things up to a very specific torque um, rather than using bolts. So that's just removing one of the pipes that went through to um, the first of the smaller ion pumps. So we had the large one connected up to this large port here and then we had the two smaller ones connected to these two ports here. Right, that's ready to come off. Oh, I've just realised my tea's gone cold. Okay, this section should have some of the magnetic coils in, um, I believe. But let's see what we find. There's always one you miss, isn't there? That is pretty heavy. Wow. Wow, that looks amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, a beautiful bit of engineering on there. I need to turn that into something. Right, so uh, this is the next section. Um, all the wires are running into this um, small ring, which is around here and does appear to be separate. It was sandwiched between this base part and the 
larger section of the column. Uh, we've got another copper gasket. I'm not sure if this just lifts out. There's not much to see at this point. There is, there's, does appear to be two uh, parts of this. You can see there's a, a plate mounted on the top there with one, two, three, four screws securing it into place. Uh, we've got another copper gasket and this arrangement here. So not sure what that's doing. So we've got this uh, metal tube that's been welded onto this plate. Um, this is all steel. Okay, inside here we've got two um, coil assemblies. We've got this large, large one with some two fairly substantial wires running into it. So that's obviously going to be pretty basic high current coil in there. Um, and then we have these uh, much finer coils here. Um, and with that uh, magnetic coil assembly um, removed, we can also see um, the valve assembly for for here. So what this uh, quite clearly does is completely seal off um, the section below from the rest of the chamber above. So the way that works is we've got a pneumatic um, piston here which just drives this, this bar. And there's a small copper plate uh, on a small hinge arrangement. So when it's pushed forward, it, it um, actually forces it to, to actually clamp down. Let's see if we can get a better view for you. So in its fully retracted position, it's there and you have the aperture where it goes through to the next section and when it's moved this way pushes across and it then starts to touch on this wheel here and that, that pushes it down and seals the uh, seals the gap it's interesting you can see a small little tiny spot on the top of the uh, the bar there that's obviously um, a little bit of burn from the electron beam Okay, from uh, what I can tell, there is no further real other parts in this, but I am going to separate the base from this section just to check. Uh, I don't think there is, though. Uh, I can just about get my Allen key in. Yep, nothing in there apart from a gasket. And these wires here, um, they, they actually ran through um, on a small flat flex down to the connections that were left on the final coils, which are still on top of the sample chamber. So uh, we'll have to have a look at those um, in the future. Uh, those actually broke off when I was trying to lift it off. I think in hindsight, um, there's actually um, a different procedure for actually removing the column um, than I did. I suspect the proper procedure is to remove those four Allen bolts that were just on the top there, and then this, the rest of the column from there above would have uh, come away. Okay, so now we've seen all the tear down and these beautiful bits of engineering. Uh, I think it's about time that we went into some of the detail about how this works, or how I think it works anyway, at least. If anybody does spot me making any mistakes, then uh, please feel free to mention that in the comments. Uh, obviously, I'm not, uh, uh, an expert on anything like this so if uh, if there is somebody out there who knows more about these then uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. So as you saw in the teardown video this part is the bit that holds the filament uh, for the electron gun. Um, the connections into the top here would have been on a, a rather big socket with a big cable that would have plugged in here probably screwed onto that uh, that thread as well. There's a number of connections down into the bottom there I will go into those in a little bit more detail in just a moment. Um, as I mentioned in the um, video as well, the this section is uh, all under vacuum. 
uh, but you actually also need to adjust the position of the filament in relation to the holes and apertures that you'll see in a moment. And that means you have to be able to gimbal this section around uh, while still being fixed to this top section which is completely fixed in place. So there is a section of uh, metal bellows here which allow the uh, filament itself to be moved around while still maintaining the vacuum. Now I have actually removed the filament from this which is why that uh, T-shaped bit that was actually attached on here has been taken off because that's going to a new owner um, very shortly. So. Uh, I didn't want to damage that, so that has been removed, which does also mean that this bit comes off now. So just bear that in mind. So what I'll do, I'll just run through all of the different parts to this, uh, and then I'll try and explain how it all works. Um, so on the top here, uh, as I said, we had the uh, filaments, the actual tungsten wire. Um, that is slightly different to a thermionic filament because it doesn't use uh, any thermal um, effect to help generate the... Uh, or release the electrons off the filament. It uses a field effect, so it's effectively cold. Um, so there's a number of connections on here. Um, that was the connection right up to the filament. Um, and then there was a second connection on one of these um, that, uh, I said, that also clamped down this piece of metal. We also have these two connections here. Uh, they serve two purposes, uh, which I'll go to into a little bit later. So put that aside. The next part down was this bit here and if I can just take that off now if you could imagine the um, that filament attached um, on here and then pointing down that would have then inserted inside this part um, the these two connections actually plugged into um, little terminals which plugged in there which made contact with that so the filament would have been deep down inside this part um, this is all metal. Um, these terminals here um, also allow the connection to this metal part. Um, this is known as the Winelt cap. And then down in the bottom there you can just see a small aperture um, that the actual electrons will flow through. And on the base uh, we have this large insulator, uh, this metal ring here, and then this cap on the bottom again with a interestingly shaped area just in here and then finally in this part which is a rather beautiful bit of uh, uh, metal uh, we have another similar shaped base and another hole in the bottom which is even smaller and in the bottom there you can see where the beam of electrons would come out so uh, how does all this work right the filament is not just a plain wire, uh, it is a V-shape with a small um, piece of tungsten attached to the end. Uh, the tungsten is shaped so it's conical and it comes down to an extremely fine point, uh, I believe in the order of like 100 nanometers. And to pull a stream of electrons off this, uh, you bias the Winelt cap to um, two or 3,000 volts in relation to the actual filament. Um, and that uh, by the electrostatic effect that draws electrons off that very, very fine filament of uh, tungsten to generate a very, very tight and, and coherent beam. That's why the uh, field effect type of electron gun actually allows you to generate much higher resolution images because of the better beam quality you get. So if we come back to these parts here, um, the filament is actually attached to these, part, these parts here and these two terminals will apply the bias current, the bias voltage to this area here uh, which then uh, draws the electrons off that filament down and then uh, some of them will go flying through the, uh, the hole there um, and then they will be attracted to the final anode which is actually at ground potential which is this. So the main um, acceleration voltage is actually between this part here and that part in there. Now I uh, mentioned previously that these two connections serve two purposes. Uh, if I just uh, unscrew these, you should be able to see here, one of them is insulated and one of them actually makes a connection to this base here. 
If I then unscrew this section, we can see that small aperture. Uh, that is a very, very thin piece of metal of some description. Um, it's uh, very, very thin. And those connections at the top went through to this uh, ceramic heater, which is part of the baking out system. So this will heat up and bake the electron gun uh, and all the bit parts around it uh, so you can achieve a better vacuum. So it looks like it's uh, some kind of, it's like a ceramic base, so it'll just be a, a, a great big resistor really. And you can just see the lines um, of the resistive element inside there. You can see there that uh, measures out to um, about 32 ohms. And uh, this outer metal ring on here, um, all that seems to be doing is actually just securing this uh, metal piece in place. But why it's the size that it is, I don't know. Um, maybe that serves some other purpose as well. So we can also take a look at these coil assemblies. So I'm guessing that this must be the um, stigmatism control. Uh, we have uh, a total of eight uh, coils there uh, on a flat flex. Um, now that might look like there's there's two wires there, but there is actually four um, on the connections here. Uh, you can you should be able to just see that uh, we've got two wires on the top and two on the bottom uh, connected in through these four wires here. So we've got two separate um, circuits on this. Uh, so presumably the biasing between one set of four and the other set of four will be able to um, squash and squeeze the um, beam to uh, make it nice and round and very coherent. There's only two wires running into that and you've got one field that way and one winding that way. I'm not sure what that would have been that would have been doing. If anybody knows what that uh, that particular coil is for please leave them in the comments. And this, I'm going to guess, is the main focusing coil. Uh, we've got a rubber gasket. And we've got a very, very potted um, coil in there. Um, nice heavy steel base there. Um, if you remember on the teardown, um, there was actually some set screws uh, to provide adjustment and those pushed against these um, these points here. These are probably hardened steel um, just so they can cope with the, the pressure of the little grub screw to um, move this around and get the uh, focus just right. And yeah, that is a very potted coil in there. Uh, fairly large wires on it. Uh, it's probably, probably 0.75 millimetres in there. So and it's labelled 87.8, 7 ohms, 20 degrees, and 900T on it. Right, I think that pretty much concludes uh, this part. Um, there's certainly going to be more to see um, on the rest of it. We have the remaining um, scanning coils, uh, which are located on the top of the sample chamber, which is still on the main unit. So there's still plenty to see. So um, stick around and wait for part three. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye for now.